What's an eco-friendly island zoo without the Amur leopard? It's a beautiful, critically endangered big cat with only about 100 of them left in the wild. So of course, we should add them in our park. Get ready for their exciting arrival. Hey everyone, my name is The Lady Designer and welcome back to another episode of our Eco Island Park, where in the last episode, we brought in the adorable Tasmanian devils from the Oceania pack and built this fantastic research and education center. Now before we jump into creating a habitat for the Amur leopard, there are obviously a few things we need to do first. For instance, we have the cute Tasmanian devils right over here. Who is this? Oh, we have cute little Pip. She's not pregnant just yet. Hopefully that is going to happen in this next episode because that will be just super amazing but breeding with the tasmanian devil seems to be difficult in captivity so yeah we have to wait and see how fast this is gonna go if we compare their mates they have an 85 percent chance of offspring so that is already pretty high so yeah i just really hope this is going to happen anytime soon because they're Giving offspring animation or at least seeing the joy coming out of the pouch is just so adorable if you haven't seen it yet. So that is definitely something I am looking forward to so, so much seeing this with the Taz and Pip. This is going to be so exciting. We have the amazing Gemma right over here and she is doing advanced research on the Tasmanian devil to research the tumor disease. So I am super happy she started to work at their zoo to help these guys and to find a cure for it. We are doing the advanced research. We have a little bonus right over here. I actually don't know exactly if this is going up when you do more research to other animals. So I was thinking since we're going to add the Amur leopard that Victoria is going to do advanced research on the Amur leopard. So hopefully our advanced research bonus will go up at that point. So talking about the Amur leopard, here in quarantine we're looking at Diego and and Shira are new Amur leopards. And once we got proper habitat ready for these two, I will make sure to give you all a proper introduction and I'll also make sure to share their story, like what happened with them before they came to us and how they are doing. So definitely stick around for that. So very quick note, if you guys remember in the previous episode, I did ask you guys about the color code for these glass panels. I got two really helpful comments. Thank you guys so much for that. Got one that was saying, like a really dark gray color so 373737 as a color code or just go for like a dark blue or like a black color that also looks pretty well so we are using the 373737 color code for these glass panels i think that looks a lot better than the brown color they look so much better now in my opinion thank you guys so much for your help with that and oh my goodness i'm so excited to share this with you guys milo and lumi are expecting more offspring so very soon she will give birth to one two or maybe even three cubs in her zoo so that's just absolutely fantastic now we do already have tons of female name suggestions but we are lacking a bit with male name suggestions for the rat panda so definitely let me know all your male name suggestions for the rat panda in the comments down below and stay tuned for hopefully lots of offspring of these cute fluffy little balls i'm just so excited for it. So, right. Um, it looks like our caretakers are not able to keep up with all this litter. We have Mabel and Ricardo. Mabel has a high workload. And Ricardo has an efficient workload. I do think that we can train Mabel a little bit, but I do feel like we should just hire one more caretaker here. And we're going to name you Wilmer. Thank you so much for joining our staff team. And now that we are here at the shops, you can tell it is really busy. And if we go to our zoo overview right over here, thirst is 51%. So we could definitely work on that. And I actually was thinking to maybe add 
two more shops right over here because I think that is definitely going to help with these guys. Obviously, we're going to decorate and, and make everything look nice and pretty later on. But for now, we, we obviously also do need to earn some more money to start working on the Amur Leopard habitat. So bringing in some more shops is definitely a smart thing to do. And I do think it's also a good idea to add a gift shop or two. So I think for now, we're just going for the just a memento and later on at some other shops as well. So here we have Michael, this is going to be Ryan, and here we have Lisa. And do not forget to leave your first name as well in the comments down below if you want any staff member to be named after you. Now, I think it was in the first episode that our security guard Kane actually mentioned to change the shop names and to change the uh, stuff that they are selling. But I did notice that you are not able to change the names here. So the only thing that we can do is change the shop names in this case. So I did change the hot dog squad name to tofu dog squad and the merchandise shop to eco-friendly memento. If you guys have any other funny suggestions that we could at least name these shops to, definitely do let me know in the comments down below. And also we should definitely not forget to add some ATMs around here. I will change the colors in a later stage, but for now I'm just going to plop down a few ATMs around the zoo just to make sure that guests will not run into any cash problems. But as soon as we're going to decorate all these areas, we are obviously going to integrate them very nicely into the buildings or something like that. And to make sure we have one extra vendor in here, we just hired Dylan. Welcome to our staff. Someone actually did comment about the staff wages, like especially when working in an eco-friendly zoo, your employees do realize that it's not about the money. It's about the story and it's about standing behind the conservation effort and the goals that we have with our Eco Island Park. So yeah, lowering these staff wages to as low as possible, which is probably not that much, is just a very smart thing to do. So I was able to lower it until the mechanics, but as soon as you get to uh, Marcus, our head of security, he's like, no, 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 I'm not going to work for anything less. <laughs> and the same goes for the caretakers and for the vendors. So uh, yeah, we can't do anything with these wages, but I think that's totally fine. Also, now that Lumi is pregnant, I think it's actually a very good idea to add another webcam in this habitat. Like, I think it's just super smart to add another webcam here because this could potentially be the area where she is about to get offspring, right? So if we add a webcam right over here, the guests from home are able to see her getting offspring here. Enter camera view. Yes, this is just perfect. Now I am not entirely happy still with the marketing rating that we have here. So I do think that we should do another campaign here. Now I'm not entirely sure, but maybe we should go for the medium impact one so maybe some online campaign viral videos let's just do that because i think we have some more room here for some extra people in our zoo and they are going to help as well with bringing in some extra income now as more people are arriving in our zoo it might be good to look into security because marcus is the head of security and he has an efficient workload still so i don't really feel like we should be hiring another security guard but what we can do is is actually add some security webcams in here which are also going to help Marcus in the future when things become more busy in our zoo. Now I won't normally add these security cameras because they're just <laughs> <laughs> big and hideous but for a little extra touch of realism i actually do want to add these guys so i'm just going to put a few around the zoo and maybe just add one around the trees at the butterfly garden maybe one at the exhibits as well I mean, if we just look at it, it does look pretty cool as well. If we just want to keep an eye out to our guests as well. I think we should also add one here at the education center for the Tasmanian devil and also add one right over here at the research center and maybe just add one more on this side as well. 
Now, I do think around the shops, we should also have a few. Now, since these buildings are not finished just yet, I'm just going to plop down these bigger cameras. And later on, we can replace them with some smaller cameras around the area. So now if we just check the heat map and go to security and crime, we can actually see how much we are covering here. Now we have a path right over here that is not really covered, but there's also not that much to do just yet. So I'm not too worried about that later on when we have more habitats. We will obviously be adding some more security cameras around here. But yeah, so far the coverage definitely looks very good. And I can only assume that Marcus is very happy with that. And since Marcus is the only security guard for some time, I am going to train you just to make sure that you're able to do your job as good as possible. And now that we are looking at our staff here, I do think that all the staff members with a high workload should be trained if we're not already about to train them. Also to make sure that these guys are able to handle their job as good as possible without getting overworked. At this point in time, I don't feel like training you guys because that is going to cost us a lot more money I think so talking about saving money quickly before we continue if you are looking for a great discount on planet zoo the new Oceania pack other planet zoo packs and other games like the sim city skylines jurassic world evolution farming simulator and many other great games our channel is sponsored by instant gaming and via their website you can get a really good discount on all these incredible games and by buying via their website you will get a great discount and you will also be supporting the channel i will make sure to put a link to their website website in the description of this video and in the pinned message of the comment section so you can easily find it. This is so exciting. Darwina is about to get offspring. The offspring is imminent. So I am so excited to see how many tortoise babies she is about to give birth to because <laughs> oh my goodness, it can be so many and I just hope it will be so many because I just absolutely love to see so many little tortoises walking around this butterfly garden that would be just so amazing is this it oh there's one. Oh, there's two. Oh, two little faces oh please give us more three yes oh this is so good can you give us more oh it's three, but it's so adorable. So we now got three baby girls in our zoo. I'm so excited about them. So thanks to your name suggestions, we now have Gaia, which means Earth. We have the adorable tiny Olive right over here. And this is the adorable little Talia, which means near water because she is born really close to the water of our island. And just look how tiny they are. They're just so freaking adorable, aren't they? I'm so happy that we finally have some baby tortoises around here. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Now, because I was secretly hoping for more offspring, I think I'm not going to give any contraceptives just yet to the adult tortoises because because hopefully we are able to see some more baby tortoises in the near future and then after that we will give some contraceptives to these guys but they're just too cute and I think regarding space if we look at the space requirements we have tons of space left to get some more tortoises in here so yeah I am not going to give these guys contraceptives just yet so our guest happiness rating is slowly going up I'm a little bit disappointed that thirst is not yet in the green but hopefully that will change over time and right over here the guests are actually saying I'm so glad that the ATM 2 is free and uh, no that's not going to happen because we are going to <laughs> some money here let's say 25 cents for every transaction being made with the ATMs because obviously we want to earn some money for everything that we do in here because that's how you keep your park going right now there's no sign yet of Pip and Taz getting some offspring but oh gosh <laughs> Taz is on its way. <laughs> Their screams are just so funny. You need to be quick though, because Pip is almost eating that whole blood pumpkin all by herself. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cute. So how is their bonding status? Or Okay, they are bonded. So that looks like these two can actually breed like any second at least I hope they will oh look at how beautiful she looks oh my goodness I'm just so in love with little pimp she's so adorable 
Oh my goodness, Taz, you're making so much noise in here. <laughs> it's so hilarious. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that, look at that. That's so funny. <laughs> I just love that little scratching animation. It's so cute. Like, it's cute, but it's also wild and like, oh my goodness, what are you doing? I'm actually waiting quite some time here just to secretly hope that Pip and Taz are going to mate with each other. But so far, I'm just super unlucky. But look at our money. Our money is doing pretty well. We almost have 35,000 right now. So while we wait and hopefully will not miss out on the breeding of the Tasmanian devils, I do feel like we should already start working on the Amur leopard habitat because Diego and Shira are still waiting in quarantine and it's about time that they will get a proper habitat in our zoo. So we start off by creating a raw sketch of the layout of the habitat. Now the plan is to get an open middle section for the animals with a path around it and one open area that will connect the inner area with an outdoor habitat. And we will also do a little bit of terraforming to create a bit of like a volcano in the middle of the island, but we will get back to the volcano in a later episode to make it all look a lot better than it looks right now. Now I'm not entirely sure what happened, but I did lose a little bit of footage here of the chain link fences with wood and vines on the inside area. So I really do apologize for that, but you will see it later on in this video. So don't worry too much about it. Now the chain link roof on this middle dome was quite a struggle to get right. As you can see, we are using a lot of the mud pillar technique all around this building. And to get this round dome shaped roof from chain link fences to nicely cover the middle section, you have to get a little bit more creative. So what you do is you move the chain link fence outside of the boundaries where you want the dome roof to be. And you first place a circle of chain link fences. And in my case, I also wanted to have a beam in the middle of it to really give a nice accent to the roof. You will then need to make sure to rotate everything vertically and try your best as good as possible to align it exactly in the middle of the mud pillar again. And trust me, this is barely doable. <laughs> so to get a perfect roof here is barely impossible. So we just do our best to make it look as good as possible in the end. So when you have the chain link fences in their place, you are going to duplicate and rotate all the pieces so you get this big round ball shape for your roof. Now before removing anything, you can still move the roof up and down a little bit if you want it to be a little bit high or a little bit lower. And then once you have it on the place you want it to be, you can then select everything underneath the point you want to keep for the roof and remove the rest of it and remove all the pieces that are sticking out on the edges to make it all look nice and clean. So after I got the chain link roof in place, I started working on the roof that will be above the guest path. Like I didn't want it to be completely closed and dark. So that's why I added these smaller triangle glass pieces and added some wooden beams around it to give it more more of a natural look. Now on the left side of the building, I wanted to play around with the animal talk seating area. It's something I barely do because I always forget about them, but this time we're going to give them a very nice spot in our building. As I didn't want to close the roof here completely, I wanted to go for a more open beams look with a lot of the thinner beams. And for this, I am again using the mud pillar technique and the part that we are creating on the other side, we will later be using as a roof cover for a little restaurant we will also be adding in this building. So when the shape of the building was pretty much done, I replaced everything a little bit closer to the volcano as I didn't want it all to become super far away from each other because on the volcano we will also be adding a lot of path flowing naturally around the volcano, creating some nice viewings looking into the habitat as well. But obviously to avoid too many bottlenecks, we will extend these paths with a nice viewing gallery so people don't feel like too rushed when they enjoy the view into the Amur leopard habitat. Now placing the animal talk seating areas was a little bit of a struggle as they do snap to the edges of your path, but by extending the path underneath it just a little bit, you are able to have more control over them to rotate them with the advanced move tool. So to make things easier for myself to connect them later on to each other, I decided to align the two seating areas with the walls on the sides. So then later, all I need to do was to get some concrete pieces and to fill up the area in between them to make it look like one whole big seizing area. And I do really like how this one 
has turned out in the end. So to make sure the Amour Leopard is going to use the indoor area, I added a little natural water section in the middle so they can use this to drink from. And on the edges, I added some higher rocks to make everything look more interesting and also to make sure the Amour Leopard will walk a little bit on eye level of the guests. And after that, all I had to do was adding some walls on the edges where there was no wall yet and adding some coverage for the path with some plaster pieces. And then it was time to add a viewing dome entrance where we will later add a really nice cave viewing with some one-sided glass where the Amour Leopard can relax and get some privacy. This will obviously include a lot of rock work so I won't bore you guys too much with that but it's definitely a really nice idea to hide a viewing dome entrance like this as it blends in super nicely in a cave like this and inside of the habitat we will be adding two different viewing domes where the guests can see the Amour Leopard more up close. Now one thing I forgot is that the Amour Leopard can obviously jump very high so the roof that I created actually was too low so I had to create a little extra fence on top of it to make sure the Amur Leopard was not able to escape by jumping on the roof. Now at some point I actually realized that I forgot to add an information stand in our zoo in general so I thought at the entrance of this building was a very nice spot to squeeze in a little information counter with some really nice thatched roofs from the Oceania pack and the beautiful Amur Leopard sign. Now you will see me use a lot of these signs on the inside of this building by the way because together with the mural walls and the leaf signs they look just so freaking beautiful if you ask me but I did leave out a lot of the placing footage because in a small round building like this me going from the left side to the right side to the left side to the right side and then speeding everything up is going to get you guys just crazy when looking at the footage so yeah I did remove a lot of that footage as well and then the last thing we will do is decorate the outdoor habitat. Now as this also includes a lot of the rock work again and placing a lot of trees and bushes and stuff, I won't be including everything in the speed build as it will be a lot of doing the same thing. Now we will obviously place some enrichment items in the habitat and we will also be building a little climbing frame in the habitat as the Amur Leopard loves to climb. I did use a lot of the more natural looking branches for this to create a pretty simple but still effective climbing frame for that. Now at some point I actually did feel like closing off more of the habitat for some more privacy for the Amur Leopards and also for some more realism. So right where the keepers come in there will be more of a backstage area that isn't really decorated just yet and I do have to admit after adding a lot of rocks and stuff in the habitat the habitat did turn out to be too small for the animals. So this indoor area is also saving us from the ugliness of me creating a huge area underneath the terrain of the volcano to give them more space so not entirely sure what happened there because when I started building the habitat the space did look fine to me like over a thousand square meters or anything but at the end it really turned out to be way too small when I added all the rocks in it so yeah luckily we are able to cheat here thanks to the big volcano so we have just a really big cave pretty much underneath the volcano which is going to help us give some more space for the Amur leopards. Ladies and gentlemen I would love to introduce you to this young male Diego and Diego was caught in a forest in Russia in a dangerous trap set by people who wanted to catch Amur leopards for their fur. Luckily people found him and were able to bring him to a rescue center to take care of his wounds but because his paw is just too damaged releasing him back into the wild is just too risky because he might be captured again by the wrong people but despite his injuries he still loves to run and play around in his habitat and he is so freaking gorgeous and here we have the beautiful Shira who was found as a cup by wildlife experts in China's Changbi mountains who were unfortunately unable to track down her mom so she was sent to a rescue center where she grew up the first years of her life now she unfortunately adapted too fast to humans making it a lot 
lot more dangerous for her to be put back into the wild. So that's how she now came here and we can hopefully get some nice offspring with Diego to release in the wild. Shira is a very gentle and kind leopard. So in general, the Amur leopard is critically endangered and there are only around 110 Amur leopards left in the wild. They are losing their homes because people are cutting down forests to build houses and such and some people hunt them down for their beautiful fur, which is obviously illegal but still unfortunately happens. These problems make it super hard for Amur leopards to survive and get babies. So that's why their numbers went down super fast but thanks to conservation efforts, numbers are now slowly recovering and hopefully with our breeding efforts in our eco island park we will be able to help the numbers go up again. So let me just quickly show the habitat to you guys. This is the entrance of the Amur leopard. Let me just show the cave viewing right over here. It's nothing really spectacular but it's just a nice hay bedding area, a nice area for them to get some shade. And here is the viewing dome entrance and I think this is just a perfect way of hiding the viewing dome entrance which is super big. So yeah, some rocks do wonders here I would say. And here we have a little information stand with this Amur Lambert sign which looks so cute in my opinion. And we did hire uh, Katharina to work here, but I think Katharina is now on a break. But welcome to our zoo and welcome to our staff team. So let's go in here because we have quite a lot to show you guys. This is the beautiful indoor Amur leopard habitat. So this area is the section where they are able to get some water to drink a little bit. And then on this side, we have some education signs. We have a big thank you here to the YouTube FIFA members. You are all Amur leopard donators. Thank you all so much for your support. So these signs right over here are just amazing. I never used them and now I will be using them everywhere, I think. <laughs> Created some some billboards right over here so you can download them as well in my discord server the link in the description if you want to use them they are just so beautiful aren't they oh my goodness we have some conservation signs here for some more education and we have a little kids education stand right over here as well i'm not entirely sure if guests would walk here maybe we should hide a vista point here and there uh, talking about hiding there are tons of donation boxes in and around here and also some bins so yes they are here you just don't see them <laughs> and some beautiful signs here though just look at that little face isn't that adorable oh my goodness i just so much love it i'm going to pause a bit because i hear some notifications and i do not want to miss out on any breeding or whatsoever uh so okay we go here. We have another sign here with more YouTube FIFA members. Thank you all so much for your support. You guys are also Amur Leopard donators from now on. And here we have some animal talk seating areas. And I am just so excited about this. And we obviously also have an Amur Leopard expert. This is Tice. So Tice, welcome to our staff team as well. You are now the expert going to talk and teach all our guests about the Amur leopard and how important it is that we protect them and to make sure their population in the wild increases again. And I just really love this sign right over here. Oh my goodness. But that is also due to the fact that this beautiful Amur leopard sign, the contrast and the colors just work so freaking well. And it also just works super well with these staircases so it's just i i absolutely love it i barely use these seating areas and i'm just so excited about this okay so we added a security webcam right over here and oh we have some ambient speakers here as well hidden around everywhere so if you hear some noises like birds and stuff that is because of those ambient speakers and here we have a little restaurant area and in the beginning i was like ah, i'm not sure and when i started to add these signs again everywhere oh man i just so much love this area and also here with the atm and just hiding it everywhere i really wish we had more signs to to be able to have a little variation here and there but other than that i'm just super excited about this monsieur frit here 
And we have, I think, a Pip Shop juice right over here. And yeah, I'm just so happy with how this whole area has turned out. It took me two days to build and the amount of time and effort I put into it, I think was so worth it. Now, obviously a very big whip, but we are going to have some different height elevations and stuff going on, some path going through the mountains or the volcano so the guests can walk all the way over here. I would not have done this if we wouldn't have these incredible fences, which I just so much love. And the volcano path texture is also really amazing. So it's a win-win. So the guests can stand here as they are doing right now and enjoy the Amur leopard from above. We have, uh, yeah, okay. Some stuff is clipping through the viewing domes. Uh, it is what it is, I, I don't really mind. But they have a really nice view right over here. And if they are jumping here, they can also see them. Pretty cool angle. And oh man, oh, they're actually using the cave. Okay, pause it, pause it. <laughs> and just walk around here. And you have some nice viewings as well inside of this habitat. And then the, yeah, right over here underneath it, you, you, you can barely see it. We need to decorate this. I'm going to close it off just to have a little opening. And this is the area that we're cheating with. Okay, you did not see anything. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. This is exactly how I wanted it to look. <gasps> look how amazing they are. They are so beautiful. I can't get over it. Absolutely gorgeous animals, aren't they? Just wow. <laughs> So for the Amur Leopard, we hired Jonathan. You are responsible to take care of the Amur Leopards in our zoo. And now that we have them in our zoo, I want to make sure we are doing some advanced research. So Victoria is going to do advanced research on the Amur Leopards. Oh my goodness, look at this. How awesome does this look? <gasps> it is completely full. And Thais is just starting with his animal talk. This is just so good. Oh my goodness. I totally forgot how awesome this is. Look at these kids sitting right over here as well. <sighs> this is just fantastic. I did turn off the option that people can stand here just to make sure that there are no bottlenecks or anything. Like it's, it's a four meter wide path or anything. So we need to avoid that. Guests are even reading the signs right over here. Yes, all we need here is a vista point. So we can try to get some guests in this corner right over here. I'm just going to hide it somewhere in the pillar. So we're not seeing it, but it still works. And hopefully attract some guests to this corner. So do let me know in the comments down below what you guys all think of this new Amur leopard habitat and let me know your animal suggestions of what animals we should add next to our eco island park and also do not forget to share your male name suggestions for the red pandas and of course as well for some future offspring of the Amur leopard. Leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed and subscribe of course if you haven't already. And yeah, I just really do hope to see you guys on the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye guys!